time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? All right, guys, do you know what these are? If you can see, they're peeps. And how I see it, there's two kinds of people in this world. There's the people that love peeps and think they're amazing, and there's the people that don't like peeps. I don't like peeps. I kind of, I don't know, they're crunchy and marshmallowy, and it's just not my favorite thing. So we've come up with a super awesome thing for you to do with the peeps, whether you like them or not. Have you ever heard of peep jousting? Peep jousting! How exciting does that sound? So, if you've got some peeps, or even if you don't have peeps and you've got some marshmallows, you can totally do this game at home. So, we have a video that's gonna show you peep jousting, and I need you to decide first what peep you think is gonna win, and then we're gonna see who wins at the end. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Today, we're gonna to talk about Easter and what makes it happier than any other day. Even though we're kind of doing Easter a little different this year, and it doesn't look like it has in the past, it's still an amazing day. And it's not because of peep jousting, even though that's fun and all the chocolate you might get in your Easter baskets. It's because of something that happened thousands of years ago. It's such a powerful story, but it's so simple. So simple that in fact, we can tell it to you using laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers.
Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them. But now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. Wow, I hear that story every year and it still amazes me how God sent his son Jesus to die for us, for our sins, because of his love for us. The simple fact that Jesus came and died for my sins is proof that I can do anything. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. And I can be brave because Jesus is alive. And I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Is there something that you can do because Jesus is alive? Take a moment and think about that question with your family. I love that we as families can have conversations like that and share what God is doing in our lives together and that we need to remember that something that happened so long ago helps me to trust in God even today no matter what's going on in our lives. Now I have a challenge for you. I want you to go out with your family, to go outside or somewhere that you want. You can get all dressed up if you want, be in your PJs, it doesn't really matter. And take a family photo to remember today and what God has done for you. And we would love to see that photo. You can stick it on our Facebook page or you can stick it in the comments, but we wanna see your family and you celebrating Easter today. Maybe now, more than ever, this is the time to celebrate and remember God's faithfulness and the hope he gives us through Jesus. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. All right, so now we're gonna end with a time of prayer. So, as you know, when we pray, we bow our heads, we close our eyes because we're talking to God and we need to show God respect. All right, every head bowed. Father God, I thank you so much 
that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and that you loved us so much that you would send your son for us. I just pray that you will help us have a great day today, that we will remember today when we're celebrating with our family and when we're doing all the fun things that we will remember your love for us above all. I just thank you so much for everyone that was able to join us today and I just pray that they will have a wonderful day today with their family. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We had so much fun, and I hope you have a great day.